Hi, this is Jonathan. Thank you for watching this video. Today I would like to give you a bit of uh, information or a bit of background about myself, but also why I believe so much into permaculture and aquaponics. So I was born in France. Uh, I grew up uh, in, a, in a very uh, small place uh, on the east of France, very close to the Switzerland border, into the mountains. And I was completely passionate about uh, nature, the environment, and especially the aquatic environment. So as a kid, I spent my whole, whole life around the river, a river called the Doubs. I used to dive into the river to go fishing a lot. I was uh, completely passionate about nature, about the environment. And when I started my studies, uh, I started as a landscaper. I did uh, two years uh, studies after the bachelor uh, to be a landscaper. And I worked as a landscaper for two years. Uh, I specialized uh, into the creation of uh, ornamental ponds. And I was very interested into the biology, uh, the aquatic biology, also the plants that uh, you put around the ponds and all the, the plants you can grow in a normal garden. Following this, those studies, I was so interested into the aquatic environment that I continued the studies into aquaculture. And I did a degree in aquaculture where I learned a lot about uh, the different fish that you can grow in fish farms and uh, the techniques to grow the fish. So there I had uh, uh, very strong skills in, uh, in uh, fish biology and following those studies I worked in different farms. Working in those farms, uh, fish farms and uh, also uh, shellfish farms, so freshwater and saltwater, different farms around the world, I've been very, uh, very much shocked uh, and very upset about the way we are producing uh, our own food and especially our fish. Uh, I couldn't imagine when I was a kid and uh, when I was passionate about uh, growing fish, I couldn't imagine that they would be grown this way. So in a fish farm, the, in most of the fish farms, let's say, uh, the fish are grown in very high density and uh, they are grown in mono spaces, right? When you go for uh, big, uh, big farms, they grow only one crop and uh, this, is, this is basically the, the product they can sell. So if, let's say a trout farm grows only trout and uh, at a very high density, which means that the fish uh, are grown in, uh, in tanks that we call raceways. Uh, they are grown in those tanks uh, uh, very close one to each other and they developed a lot of uh, disease. Uh, those fish, uh, they, they eat a lot and they reject a lot of ammonia into the water. And this ammonia most of the time is uh, rejected directly into the, into the rivers. So it's true for all the fish that are in fresh water but also in salt water. In salt water the fish are grown in cages and uh, the poo and the, the poo is released into the into the sea so sometimes depending of uh, where the, the cages are, are uh, displayed it can have a negative impact on the environment i don't say it's the case for all aquaculture but in most of the farms i worked for i could uh, i could see a very negative impact on the environment and uh, and actually the job I was doing as a fish farmer was very far to what I would have imagined, you know. I would imagine uh, working uh, close to the environment, growing f uh, fish in a really nice uh, aquatic uh, ecosystem. But instead of that, I was growing fish in extremely high density and trying to produce always uh, the, m the, m the biggest quantity as possible. And instead of basically managing fish, I was managing uh, disease, right? My job was to basically uh, give antibiotics to the fish, giving some treatment into the water with chemicals um, and um, basically having a very negative impact on the environment. And after a few years as a fish farmer, um, I started to ask myself a lot of questions. So what, what kind of job would I, would I do? Would I continue in this field? Because I was very, very upset with the way the food was produced and the fish were treated. Um, but continuing my studies, uh, I, 
I had the opportunity to work on a project uh, called AquaTreat, where basically, uh, back in, in Europe, back in the days, the government started to put in place uh, some regulations in terms of the pollution that you can release into the water. And basically, you had to pay some tax in function of the pollution that you release into the water. So the fish farmers now were very much interested by the environment and tried to decrease the impact on the environment to basically pay less tax. One of the projects called AquaTreat had for aim to reduce the pollution into the water by using bioepuration, which means basically uh, treating the water with, uh, with vegetables. So we tried uh, to reduce the water uh, pollution by using some kind of bamboo that was growing on the, on the back of the farm. So the water go was going into those bamboo uh, grow beds and uh, then we realized that it was working extremely well. The water after this treatment, uh, the, the, the pollution disappeared. So for me, it was starting to be a real solution and I saw it with a really good eye. And I thought, oh, okay, now we are managing a kind of ecosystem. At least, at least we, use, uh, we use the waste of the fish, that is a pollution, to create something. The problem of this, of this specific uh, project called AquaTreat was that they were producing this kind of bamboo, but there was no real um, uh, market for the bamboo. So basically, we had uh, we produced something, but we didn't know what to do with. So we had them to treat this bamboo, and it was a bit of a waste. That's when I started to be very interested into this uh, kind of uh, subject, and I discovered that we could. Uh, use aquaponics. Uh, aquaponics back in the days uh, was uh, really not famous, no one known about it. But doing some research about uh, this project called AquaTreat, I realized that so there was one guy in, uh, in Canada who was growing some trout and producing some lettuce and a uh, few strawberries. And I found, okay, that's the solution. Producing uh, a crop from a waste. So basically combining uh, two systems together. And if you look at what we are doing as humans, uh, all the food we eat, all the food we can buy from the supermarket is produced as a monocrop, right? So let's look at, for example, corn. If you go into a corn field, you will see that they are producing only corn. But not only that, we produce only corn, but also we produce corn and we use the soil as a support only. You know, instead of in normal, uh, in, in nature, you know, there, there, is, there are ecosystems everywhere. You never have one crop that is growing. It's always an ecosystem, a balance between different living creatures. And uh, this balance makes uh, the environment um, uh, nice and good for all of them, right? Because there is always a good balance in terms of the population of the pests you can have, the predators, and, uh, and also uh, the, the oxygen available and all those kind of things. So in a field like today, when we buy corn from, uh, from the supermarket, it comes from a field where everything is killed. And we only want, we only want as humans, we only want one thing living into this field is the corn, which is extremely stupid. We kill all uh, the beneficial living creators that are into the field by using pesticides. We kill all the worms, all the little insects that are uh, working for us that aerate the soil and that are uh, uh, decomposing the organic matters to uh, release some, uh, foot, uh, some uh, nitrogen available for the corn. We are killing all those kind of beneficial uh, animals and we only work with fertilizer. So if you look at a corn field, it's only a support, the soil is only a support where everything is dead, treated with, chem uh, with chemicals and pesticides and uh, the corn is fed with uh, fertilizer only. The problem of this kind of thing is obviously, uh, as I just said, it, it decreases the biodiversity of the environment and it, it, it's traumatic, right? The impact is huge. But also, uh, the crop that we produce, uh, that look good, it looks good, uh, it looks to be uh, in perfect condition, it looks amazing, it looks big, but the problem is uh, the, the quality of this food is extremely low. Most of the time, uh, it's not as tasty as, uh, as a food that is grown in good conditions, but also and especially the quantity of nutrients that you got into this food is extremely low. For example, a tomato from the supermarket, uh, when, when you slice it, you can see it's almost only water. Uh, you taste it, it tastes like crap, really, it doesn't taste like tomato anymore. 
and uh, the nutrients, the vitamins that are inside are extremely, extremely, extremely low. The reason why is that we grow them with fertilizer, right? And we know what uh, a plant needs to grow uh, in terms of developing fruit and looking good. But we don't know, as human, we don't know what a plant really needs to generate the best vitamins, right? There, are, there is an amazing complexity into, uh, into the interactions between the living creatures and into the biodiversity of a soil. If you take a soil of a forest, the biodiversity that you got in the soil even in what in the quantity of uh, of herbs that you can you can uh, hold in your hands you got thousands or maybe millions of spaces into this very very small small soil every single species has got uh, a specific way of living of eating some specific nutrient and releasing a breakdown of different uh, what we would some people would see as waste but this waste is going to be the, the 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 food for other animals right and therefore, when you got a normal soil, you got a variety of uh, or diversity of nutrients that are available for the plant. In a f in a in a in a monocrop field, you got just only the few nutrients that the farmer is putting through the fertilizer, which which is extremely low. Um, and that's that's the reason why uh, uh, the, the the food that we are eating nowadays is so low in terms of nutrients and we all uh, we all have troubles to live with this food right so most of people now take supplements in vitamins or other things because uh, they are depressed we don't feel good anymore because we are not eating good food and and furthermore we eat poison right because this food is treated with pesticides and chemicals and most of them uh, there are for, for most of this food, uh, there are some cocktails of pesticides. So the interactions of or those cocktails of pesticides have, uh, have probably an extremely negative impact on humans. There are no studies about it. We don't know what is the impact of those things. Uh, we know that a lot of people are developing a lot of cancers, all those kind of disease that appears nowadays. Uh, there is, there, there are probably a lot of chance that they come from the food we are eating, right? Um, there is this guy, uh, in France, we got uh, uh, a permaculture uh, guide. Uh, I really love this guy. He's called Pierre Rabhi. And uh, he says, before eating, we used to say uh, in French, bon appétit, which means, uh, yeah, I hope you, you, will, uh, you will enjoy your meal, basically. Uh, now, we, say we have to say good luck, because with what we have into the plate, uh, we need a lot of luck to not fall sick, right? And that's exactly this. I, I know it's a bit cynical, but basically, that's, that's where we are at now. This society doesn't doesn't make any sense at all, right? So the food we are producing is ruining the planet, but also is not even healthy for us. So what's the point? Uh, the other thing is that because we kill all those uh, living creatures that are into the field, the worms that were working for us at aerating the soil and those kind of things, now we need big tractor bean giant to, uh, to be able to work, the, to work the field, to return the earth and everything, to aerate it a little bit. And uh, therefore, we consume a lot, a lot, a lot of petrol, of, uh, of energy to do that. And uh, it's definitely not sustainable, you know. Uh, the other thing also is that the food comes from the other side of Earth. By the time it comes here, uh, you know, it, it travels thousands of, of miles, of kilometers, and therefore uh, the impact on the environment is even greater. During this transport, uh, the food is kept in fridge. Uh, and uh, all the vitamins are decreasing again. So really the, the food we are eating from the supermarket is extremely low. And that's basically uh, uh, the point of this video is to explain you that for me the, the, the real reason of going to aquaponics is because in aquaponics we work with an ecosystem, a whole ecosystem where every living creature has got, uh, has got his, his place into the ecosystem and is very very important and we, we just we just give the, uh, a, good, a good environment for this ecosystem uh, to develop and nature is doing the magic. We are not involved into knowing exactly what the plant needs. We just have to uh, maintain some good limits and maintain a good balance into this ecosystem. And that's how we produce food. And that's where I think the, the magic is. So when I, did, when I found out about aquaponics, uh, I continued my studies and I did a, a master in, in food science. And from those days, uh, I was uh, working uh, on my uh, student uh, room 
with some uh, tanks and uh, some uh, because you know I've been always uh, passionate about aquatic environments I always had fish tanks at home and I was working uh, growing food on top of the fish tanks so I am so I had some lettuce growing on top of them and it was the beginning of my experiment with aquaponics and I, and I from these days I never never really stopped because uh, I think it's fantastic and there is so much to discover about it but the good point is that we can all produce our own food at home uh, in a sustainable way a food that is healthy tasty and really amazing it reconnects people with nature i mean it's uh, it's just amazing what we can do with aquaponics